What's up, everybody? My name is Riley Newton, and this is Will Rambo, and uh, we're here with the Orchard Post Game, and we're just going to talk a little bit about the sermon from our first week of fall launch of the Good Life. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Will, uh, uh, we'll just jump right into this thing. Um, you talked a lot about um, the Good Life, but why did we pick this series uh, in particular to launch this fall? No, that's a great question. We uh, a couple reasons, and I think it primarily comes down to this idea that. As we visit with people in our community and in our community of faith, we, we have a lot of questions right now about these tensions that people feel about everything that's going on in the world and, and what it is they should be pursuing. I think uh, this season that we've been in in our lives has aggravated things that are already beneath the surface. So we thought it'd be best to spend this time as we regather to focus in on what it means to walk in the rhythms of Jesus. And if Jesus offers something that's different than what the world tells us is the good life, we want to give some clear instruction about how to begin to live as Jesus invites us. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I loved how short the passage was that we preached from today. Yeah. It was just something different and mm -hmm. unique to really focus and hone in on one particular phrase or, or word. And that phrase for us today, it seemed like, was blessed are the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, we really seem to hone into that and, and try mm -hmm. to pull out as much as we could mm -hmm. uh, from that one statement. So yeah. why do you think we wrestle so much with, with that statement in particular in the Beatitudes? I mean, all of the statements in the sure. Beatitudes pull at us and, and push us in they unique do. ways. But that one in particular, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, and we talked about how it's kind of a gateway into the rest of them. It's not more or less important, but you can't experience the other blessed proclamations that Jesus makes without confessing this poor, this poverty, this... Um, recognition of our own need. And I think that comes to your question. We're not good at admitting when we have a need. We, d we don't like to ask for help. We would much rather talk about our weakness in hindsight, that I've gotten over it, I've gotten past it. But there is this reality that to believe the gospel, to call ourselves a Christian means at some point we have known we couldn't save ourselves and we needed a savior. But that's not a one-time event. It's this ongoing recognition of Jesus is the one who supplies what we need. And I think, I think when I began, and I don't know if everybody felt this way, when I began following Jesus, sometimes I thought like uh, entering into the gospel, salvation, this moment of conversion was like the, the graduation. And then after that, everything else was just like, you're, you get it on your own now. I mean, you, you get a gift, yeah. but you got to earn it from here on out. Right. But I think what poor in spirit reminds us is there's this ongoing recognition of I can't do it on my own. And, and the part I couldn't get into the sermon that I would have liked to if we'd had more time is to, to say, it's not only that I can't, but there's some relief in that I don't have to. No kidding. There's some freedom in going, no wonder I'm spiritually exhausted when I do everything out of obligation and not out of the freedom of following Jesus. So I think that's why we wrestle with it. But man, if we can push through that wrestling, I do think it's freedom and joy on the other side of it. I think there's a reason Jesus, a brilliant teacher, lays this out as the first of the Beatitudes. Yeah, absolutely, man. And to go to the other uh, story that Jesus tells about the tax collector mm -hmm. versus the Pharisee, like how it changes the perspective of our day. Like, oh, yes. How are we starting our day? Are we like opening our hands and like receiving the grace that God gives us? Or are we like going yeah. and saying, oh, man, look how good I am. Like yes. reading my Bible and praying. And yep. uh, I don't know. I'd, uh, that story really stuck out to me too. And, no, and like you said, it, it was fun to have a different kind of teaching where we had a smaller text and we could use a, a biblical story as our illustration. Right. You know, there are a lot of stories I could have pulled that made the point, but Jesus tells a great one. I didn't need yeah. to go find another one. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so finally, like the last question I have for you today, um, you pulled a quote from Duron Gray in your mm -hmm. sermon, and uh, it was our the gospel uh, cause us to have our best and worst moments simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Something along those lines, yeah. not exactly, uh, in page 26 of The Good Life. Yep. So why did you you pick that quote from Derwin Gray in, in particular? Yeah, so The Good Life is a series that we've taken from this book by Derwin Gray, which I highly commend to you. It's a fantastic book. Derwin's a phenomenal pastor and teacher. And uh, when I read through the chapter preparing a couple weeks ago, that quote really jumped off, to, off the pages to me because this idea of the... The best and worst moment conversing, mm -hmm. uh, this this intersection of we may have to admit we can't do it on our own, but in that moment, we have to also recognize that God's grace must be sufficient for us. Um, I kind of, in one of the sermons uh, this weekend, I, I referenced it. We, we don't memorize them most, so they don't all say the same <laughs> thing, but I'm always reminded of this line from an early mentor that he, that he used to tell me that 
Uh, the more we follow after Jesus, we'll recognize we are a worse sinner, but he is a greater savior. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I thought of. I actually wrote out, that out in the sides of my book on page 26, um, because that's what it reminded me of, is this idea of the intersection of our need and God's goodness. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, again, like always, I feel like I always say this whenever we're in post game, but I, I got a lot out of the sermon today. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thankful for the work and preparation that, that you dove into and uh, for bringing this sermon series to our church. Like, I'm really excited. Oh, and, me too. Uh, of course, like for everybody who was here this morning, it was really special. And uh, of course, for all of you at online and at home, like we're so grateful that we can continue to tune in the ways that we have been over the course of this pandemic. And so uh, this is Orchard Post Game. We're going to be trying to do this every week just to continue to get thoughts out of our teachers, our communicators, just because uh, we really enjoy it and hope that it's something that, that really helps you get that information in a more accessible way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we'll see you next time on the Orchard Post Game.